Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I have a wonderful guest with me today, Judith Martin Straw, and she is writer, editor, chief, and Keep everything. Going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> chief of it all, publisher, uh, yeah. publisher for the Culver City Crossroads. It's a local online newspaper magazine. It used to be a physical newspaper. No, it wasn't. No, it never no, was? No, it will soon be a physical newspaper, but it hasn't happened yet. So okay. we're just, at this point, we're just online. We do five stories a day, five days a week. It's culvercitycrossroads.com. And of course, you can find us on Facebook by going to Culver City Crossroads on Facebook. That will take you through to the site. Wonderful. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this? It's been about nine and a half years, and it's been a fantastic adventure. I've had all kinds of interesting columnists and writers. Of course, Culver City is a source of wonderful news in all kinds of ways, and we really love to publish good news. So what we like to focus on is that idea that, you know, just because it's a bad thing, that doesn't mean it should be the lead story. Giving people a place to feel good about, a place to connect, and of course it's called Crossroads because it's all about intersectionality. So here's where your stuff meets my stuff. We get together, we both get a little different, and then things carry out to the other side of the road. So. I love that. Thank you. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. I was going to call it Culver City Cornucopia, and a friend of mine said, Judith, you're the only person in this room who can spell cornucopia. Don't make it so hard for everyone to find you online. So <laughs> he was right. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. you own it, you yeah. do all of this all on your own. Well, I have other writers that contribute. Okay. Right now I only have one really regular running columnist, and that's Amy Brunel, who does the skinny. She's a very popular local uh, weight loss leader, and so she has a lot of people who follow her, her column and follow her stuff. And uh, she writes not just about uh, weight loss, but more about you know life advice. So kind of like uh, it's the it's the skinny on how to get real with yourself, not just how to get skinny with yourself. Yeah. So how um, and I don't mean to be like prying or anything, right. but how do you make your money? <laughs> well, we sell ads. We okay. have advertisers. Uh, West Los Angeles College is a supporter. Um, Cycle Bar is a supporter. We have uh, the Actors Gang. We have. Um, I'm, I'm running my mind down the page right now. Uh, we just uh, got a new advertiser, Michaela Tango, uh, is sponsoring with us. And also we have sponsorships, which means you're supporting us financially, but you're not necessarily on the page. Got it. So not everybody wants to be an ad. You know, some organizations are bigger than that. Okay. And um, we also have subscribers, which is really important. So you can go down to the bottom of the page, and there's a dark green box with a button in it that says Donate. So you click on there, that will take you through to the PayPal, and you can donate. We ask for $5 a month, because we do five stories a day, five days a week. We think $5 a month is really fair. And we have a lot of subscribers, so it's really, it's really nice. And then, of course, comments post on the page. When you read a story, there's a space underneath that for you to say, hey, that was great, or no, I totally disagree, or you know, I'd love to have more information on this. So and you can then have it some rolls dialogue through. There. Yes, yes, okay. yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. And then do you ha also, publish all of it onto your Facebook page, so then there's also the dialogue there as well, or is there a link to go It's to? a link to go to the site. Okay. And I would rather have, of course, you know, just for the sake of clicks and numbers, I'd rather have it happen on my site than have it on Facebook. Okay. Zuckerberg really doesn't need any more of your time or attention, and I do, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, just for that. But, uh, but also it gives me a way to kind of, you know, keep it tailored. Mm -hmm. And we only have three requirements for making a comment. You must sign your real name, you cannot make any threats, and you cannot use obscene language. So um, every fair. once in a while I have to take somebody down for not obeying those rules, but it's pretty rare. Mostly people are pretty civil. So. Good. So. Okay. And, and so how long have you lived here in Culver City? I moved here in 2001. Okay, and so they were just finishing the Kirk Douglas. Um, I had one daughter at the time. I now have two. Um, and yeah, I had moved from uh, an apartment in Santa Monica. Okay. My then husband and I had a nice little two bedroom apartment. And then we had a daughter and then my mom had to move in with us and it was a very crowded, small two bedroom apartment. So we said, we've got to find a house. So we were lucky enough to find one in Culver City. So you weren't moving far, so. No, not no, expensive. yeah. And before that I had lived in Venice. So okay. I was in Venice for a long time when I was single. Yeah. Did you grow up around here? Uh, Palos Verdes. I'm okay. a South Bay girl. Okay. So, yeah. 
That's not far either. No, no. Like to like to hug the coast. Like to stay where I can smell the salt water. Yeah. Me too. I yeah. like the, the ocean. My yeah. happy place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're an online magazine here in Culver City. Do you have much competition? Um. Well, I like to say I don't really have any competition because okay. no one else is doing what I'm doing. Uh, there are a number of other media outlets, some of which. Well, I just, and you know, it's, it's a tough business, but I've seen a lot of things come and go. Okay. In the nine years I've been doing this, I think there have been seven or eight other online Culver City entities that have gone offline. Uh, there were two other magazines that came up and then went away. Um, and of course, when I first started was right when uh, AOL came out with uh, Patch. I had only been online for about seven, eight months, and America Online decides they're going to do local news online. So. Nothing lets you know you're doing the right thing at the right time to have some huge billion dollar corporation come in and sit down next to you and say, we'd like to do that too. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately, unfortunately, Patch um, really fizzled. I mean, they, they just didn't set it up the right way. Mm -hmm. It's hard to come in and be local. You know, there's just all kinds of things on the ground that you know when you live here. Um, my funniest story from uh, Patch when they were covering local news was they had a uh, reporter covering the school board and at the time we had two women on the school board there was Kathy Paspalis and there was Patricia Seaver now Patricia Seaver is a lovely tall statuesque african-american woman who's probably at six foot two at least six yeah, foot three very Patricia's tall. very tall, tall. Catherine Paspalis is a very diminutive very great woman <laughs> who is like about five one and uh, the reporter quoted somebody named uh, Patricia Paspalis <laughs> so I thought Gee, that's interesting. How did you confabulate those two people into one entity? So it's challenging. You can't just walk in a room and know the backstory. Right. You know, so the advantage is that living here, Makes having kids in the schools, being part of the PTA, Girl Scouts, all that. You you're part of, of the community. Yes. You're part of the community. Yeah. Yeah. So physically, we get the Culver City News mm -hmm. and we get the Observer. Mm -hmm. Is there any other one that I've forgotten? Uh, there's currently a magazine called Culver City Neighbors that oh, yes. just started. Yes. I think they've been around for a couple of months. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they're they're very I mean light like feature stories. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're more focused. They're much more magazine-y. They're much more focused on feature. Right. And um, this is more newspaper. Is yeah. Kind of what I'm. Okay. So those are those are it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And then but you have a lot of online um, people that are doing this same kind of thing. Well, right. again, there's there's just you know uh, a certain amount of um, you know anybody can put up a, a Facebook page. You right. can say here's here's my Culver City this, here's my Culver City that. Exactly, um, and write a blog. And, and sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's great. And again, more information is good. But I had kind of an interesting. It was a very Facebook experience this morning. Was it this morning? It started yesterday. Someone had taken a news story from KCRW about the rent freeze and put it up on a Culver City group and said, I just saw this, is this true? And I thought, KCRW is a very accredited news source. Mm -hmm. You don't trust them, you don't believe them, or you trust your friends on Facebook more than you trust KCRW? So I kind of got into an exchange with this other person and I could understand where they were coming from. I think what she probably wanted to say wasn't, is this true? but what do people think about this? Mm -hmm. What are your feelings on the subject? How does this affect you? But it got into that idea of who do you trust as a news source? So she ended up saying she, she listens to a lot of NPR, and that's a KCRW, you know, so they do NPR broadcast with KCRW. Yeah, so, so this is a very uh, heated discussion at the moment in Culver City. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to definitely get that kind of attention. Well, and putting putting Crossroads out there as an entity that you can really trust. I mean, so because you, it's, you know, all of our facts are verified. We don't print rumors. We just absolutely, this is straight up AP style book journalism, unless it's a feature story. And of course, feature stories are labeled differently. Community, we do a lot of promotion for events. There's a, a you know, theater thing going on. There's a dance concert going on, that kind of thing. And uh, when I have an editorial, it's written as just a thought. So I've got a really thick firewall between my reporting and my editorial stuff. Got it. Yeah. yeah. And do you do the editorials once a week or? 
once a month? Or? You know, I do them on a very irregular basis because okay. I don't want to have a thought like every Thursday, you know, <laughs> which you could do. I mean, that's how a lot of columns traditionally have worked. Right. But if there's a topic that really is, you know, like it stays with me for a couple of days or something comes up and I think I have something more to say about that, then, you, then it's, then you know, you worth jumping into. So, yeah. Yeah. So do you think that... Um, it, where you get your sources of news, do you feel that you get them you know, firsthand, or do you get them from, or do you have to call and ch you know, check all the facts first? Well, if, so, let's say I called you up and said, yeah. so and so was doing whatever. You're yeah. not going to just take my word for it. No. Okay. But I am going to say I might find out more about that. Okay. So, great example, uh, the story about uh, the fireworks show being canceled. Mm, this yes. was a rumor that kind of floated around. I had heard it from somebody. Oh, Exchange Club, West LA College, they're going to have to cancel fireworks this year. I said, really? Tell me more. So I got some information from them. And of course, once you have one side of the story, you have one side of the story. So I got in touch with the Exchange Club, got in touch with the president, talked to her for a while. Francie was very gracious about saying, well, Yes, we have this challenge. I need you to hold the story because right. we're not really final on that yet. I said, I'd be happy to wait. Let me know when you have some information. So we kept going back and forth, talked to West LA College, talked to the Exchange Club again. I probably waited on this story for at least a couple of weeks. I think it was about two weeks. So there's but there's process. no point in putting out a rumor. Right. You know, you want to give people this. These are the facts. This is what's going on. And we ended up with a really nice uh, release from the city saying, this is why it's not happening. These are other places you can go for the 4th of July to celebrate fireworks. And you know, everybody everybody got to know what they needed to know. It's very sad that we're not having it. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. very sad. And for someone like me who grew up here having it at the high school every year, there was this, a huge sense of community that happened with the fireworks show and unfortunately We've lost that, you know, and even though West LA College was very gracious and is a really great spot to have it, um, it's still not that sense of community yeah. that we have here at the high school. So it's it's really unfortunate that we won't have it this year, but you know, there's still uh, around us, you know, near near our neighborhoods that you can go to, El Segundo, I think Marina Del Rey, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so there's other locations that are within the vicinity of Culver City that you can really, you know, yeah. go and, yeah. and watch it with your families, but it was kind of I can understand. I mean, it's kind of like not having a Christmas tree. It doesn't mean it's not Christmas, but you just feel like, wait, we're missing something. So next okay, year, but next year will be fun. It's really fun to go, you know, pack up a picnic, take your family, and hang out. And, yeah. You know, now my fun. my summer picnic thing is the Thursday night concerts. Oh yeah, I love. Those. I love the summer concerts on Thursday nights. That's my favorite picnic spot. So. Do we have questions already? Yes. Go ahead. So. Question, how you like this number set up, Brad? Um, question, would you consider your publication non-biased? Oh yeah, absolutely, I do my best. It's, it's journalism, it's just about reporting the facts. Again, when I have an opinion, it's clearly, clearly labeled as an opinion. I so, see. Yeah. I got a couple of very nice comments on uh, the piece that I wrote about uh, the council meeting on the red phrase, saying that this was, this was very fair and unbiased. Unbiased was what two of these comments used. So uh, that's our goal. If we ever, if you ever feel that we're not biased, please point it out. Okay. Yeah. Any others? Yes. Have you or will you be interviewing small businesses in Culver City? Um, I would like to do more interviews. I have a video slot on the page, and it's just one of those learning curve kind of things. I'm a writer. I'm very textually oriented. I like to talk to people and create sentences. So interviewing with, as far as filming, I mean. The filming that's going on here is expert, but uh, I need I need I kind of need an extra camera. So rather than just turning my phone around on myself, but I would love to do some more some more interviews with small businesses. Uh, small businesses are absolutely the lifeblood of any community, and that's why we do this, you yeah. know, to show that we are a sense of community, the business community of Culver City, because also it overlaps. Look at you and I both mm -hmm. are business owners who have. Li who live here? Yeah, you know. So we we actually overlap. We're residents and we're businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important. Yeah, yeah. And when you you know work where you live, you you get a better sense of who your 
readers are, who your customers are, who your audience is, you know, who you're connecting with. Exactly. And then you get to tailor it a little more to their needs, or you can bring them into something that you think they might like. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. How does one go about contributing to Culver Crossroads? You go scroll down to the bottom of the page. You can get it on your phone or on your laptop and just go all the way down. Once you get past the advertising at the bottom, there's a dark green box. And again, there's a little uh, legend in there that tells you what to do. There's a click button that says donate. And you can click on that. It will take you through. And then again, we ask that people set up a recurring payment for $5 a month. And if you do that, you're one of our subscribers and we're very grateful to you. So. <laughs> and again, you get five stories a day, five days a week. And then how do you get ideas for new stories? Is it difficult to stay positive when so many other news organizations are negative? That is a great question, and it's kind of my whole mission statement. That's my purpose, is to stay positive. I think that when our, our news shapes our vision of what the world is, and when you're always looking at dark, bad stuff, it's overwhelming. I mean, the amount of bad news we have right now, you know, just kind of like look at anything. But since I started publishing Culver City Crossroads, and of course I think this is like the zeitgeist, I don't claim to be an influence here, but the New York Times has started publishing a regular feature on good news. BBC has a weekly service called Just Good News. Uh, there's a magazine called Yes Magazine that's been around for a long time. They focus on good news. And really, there's more good news than there is bad news. The challenge is that as human beings, we're trained to look at threats. That's what we're hardwired to see what's wrong, to try to keep ourselves safe. So bad news actually gets your attention it faster does. than good news does. It does but good but news it, feels better. It does feel better. <laughs> you know, I wish that there was more of the, the good news. But also even just politics alone, you know? I mean, we've had a lot of, of that as, yeah. you know? Well, and look at, I mean, some of the good news was, um, you know, people talking about the, the debates last night. That's not local news. No. But, you know, they're talking about how to make policy changes, how to create good ideas, how to solve some of these problems. The question of where do I get ideas for stories, I think there's probably, I mean, I have more than I can even work with. There is so much interesting stuff going on in Culver City. I neglected to publish a restaurant review this week because I didn't get to eat at the same place three times. You gotta be an honest reviewer and not just review one meal. Um, I didn't have a theater review this week because I, I hadn't been to one, but uh, the last show at the Kirk Douglas, Dana H, was extraordinary. Um, there's These are just interest stories, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not all about bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like our red freeze. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, and the red phrases are necessarily bad. Yeah, I, can see, I can see both sides. It's, well, and, and when you, I, it, it was kind of epic in that there were more than 120 people who spoke at this meeting. I mean, it was a full-length feature film all into itself. But so many of the people who came, you know, they this is not an abstraction. They came because they own a small building. They are a landlord. They're wondering how they're going to make this work or... They live in a place where they've been, you know, posted with increase after increase. How do they continue making the rent? Everybody on both sides has genuine skin in the game. Exactly. So we'll see what happens when they, you know, start shifting policy and what answers they can come up with. But right now, it's really hopeful. I mean, it's really, it's a good thing that we're looking at this. You can't, you, you can't create policy without giving it some deep, deep study. And to do that, you kind of have to stop the pinballs on the machine and let everything set for a few minutes. So. I'm going to halt the, the questions for a minute, and I'm going to start making my drink. Yay. We have <laughs> we've called this drink a Midsummer Night's Drink, and um, it's got a lot of ingredients, but I think you should try making it. It looks like a, a fun thing. We'll see how Judith likes it. It, it looks like a you know potion. I, I love potions. You yeah. know I don't drink, so I'm, yes. um, I'm going to be making this, and you're going to be tasting it. So I'm going to try not to make it too strong. So I am I just put some rum, some dark rum, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put a little bit of Contra, which is um, an orange liqueur. Mm -hmm. And you can use something else too if you wanted. You could probably do like a Grand Meunier. I was just gonna say, I'm a Grand Meunier person myself. Not that anything is against Contra, but yeah. But I wanted an excuse to try this because I had picked this up on, in, on my trip to Italy. And this came from Capo d'Orlando and it's a little orange um, liqueur and it smells divine. 
So I'm going to use a little bit of that and the color is just beautiful. So this is sort of like a mixture of like a fruity and citrusy kind of drink. Mm -hmm. This is a black currant syrup. You could use other kinds. You could probably do blueberry, blackberry, something else. I'm gonna try not to make this too sweet, so I'm not gonna put a whole lot in there. I think that's enough. And then it's pineapple juice for the rest of it. There we go. And it kind of even matches your outfit. Well, that's wow. kismet right there. <laughs> But I'm going to do a little stirring of this so that whatever the rum and the, um, syrup, the syrup isn't all the way at the bottom. And we're going to let Judith try some of this for us. Great. This is straw. This it is, does really match your outfit. It does. I, again, <laughs> synchronicity strikes again. So, um, And this, is, it's, this recipe might be a little complex for us, but we're going to be... Uh, co-hosting one of the third Wednesdays in August. Mm -hmm. You could simplify it by just using Grand Manier, so you, you're not using too It's much. nice. The pineapple really comes through. Mm -hmm. This is just charming. It's that one? really lovely. Yeah, there's just Can a little tiny, tiny, it's, it's like it. at the back of the, of the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. and can you taste the rum? The rum's pretty well hidden in the pineapple, actually. Okay. <laughs> that rum might sneak up on you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a more of, I think it could be more of a um, Caribbean kind of yeah, you know, it's, punch it's, kind it's of. It's very refreshing, especially yeah. with the black currants. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so our um, offering for third Wednesday on August 21st in uh, downtown, we're going to be co-hosting with the uh, Kirk Douglas Theater. And the drink for that evening is a tropical punch. Oh, nice. So I'm going to be trying out all kinds of tropical punch between here and there to see what we end up serving. Wonderful. Well, try that recipe. Any more questions? Yes. Oh, I forgot about jewelry too. Yep. So, <laughs> so we kind of we kind of coordinate. <laughs> I forgot what I do. Um, <laughs> so we kind of coordinated our jewelry to match sort of um, our colors of our drink. So we have some pearls in the kind of like pale yellow beige colors, and then more citrine and just gold. Some other pearls here. These are more of uh, pink tones, and just to kind of mimic that black current, you know, and and the taupe pearls there. Some charms over there with the letters on them. Very and then pretty. we we put uh, on Judith some citrine and mandarin garnets there. And of course, I have my favorites. <laughs> Every week. <laughs> this is my new, this is my stack. I'm really, I keep changing the color of the beads, but the, the other two necklaces are my, my uh, go-to every, every day. You know, it seems to be something that I've really latched onto <laughs> and really love. And everywhere I go, people just come up to me and go, is that what it's, what I think it is? <laughs> When someone's not being nice or kind, I can say, hey, read my necklace. There you go. <laughs> so, this is Judith, and she writes for the Culver City Crossroads. Are there any more questions? Yes. Yes? <laughs> yes. Um, what's the most controversial issue currently affecting Culver City? The most controversial issue currently affecting Culver City really depends on what part of Culver City you're most focused in. Um, there was a lot of discussion at the last school board meeting about how many special ed teachers have left a particular grade school in the last several years. And for people who are parents in this sector, there is no more important topic than your kids getting educated and you know what is happening with these teachers who keep leaving. So um, the district is, of course, kind of, they're not closed for the summer, but they're not uh, uh, taking it on. They just hired somebody else to be the new special ed coordinator for that. I believe her name is Kathy Cole. I'm sure it's Cole. I'm not sure if it's Kathy. I may have that wrong. But uh, she has been with the district for a number of years, and she looks really competent to step into that and take that on. And she was really willing to listen to what they were saying and address all of their issues. So, um, so you find that to be... A, um 
Yeah, well, it's, you know, it depends on where you're sitting as to what is in front of you and what is the most urgent. Um, a lot of people would say traffic. Um, people who are, you know, riding around on scooters would say those people need to mind the traffic and stop at the stoplights. Um, parking, traffic. Parking, all of those kind of things, yeah. So um, I think that, you know, controversy is kind of what is being discussed. And the things that are being discussed are um, I'll, I'll come back to you know the the jobs coming in and the housing that we don't have so I think that's something that a lot of people are very motivated to find solutions on and of course uh, as I said at the, about the, the meeting there's a lot of people feeling very pressured with you know what their situation is right now whether they you know are a landlord or a renter it's there's a lot of challenge on both sides of the fence so any other questions one more what inspired you to start what inspired me to start? Well, um, it was a couple of things. Uh, I had been the editor at the Culver City News and uh, was very abruptly uh, excused from that job. <laughs> I went in one morning thinking I was going to a holiday party and I was told to clean out my desk. And um, I was in the midst of a very challenging divorce. Uh, I didn't have any time to be unemployed or feel sorry for myself. And so I left the office at 10.30, and at 1.30 that afternoon, my laptop clicked on Culver City Crossroads, and we were live. So, wow. yeah, you can't, uh, you can't let the dark moments overwhelm you. You have to just swim through them. So, And uh, I really think that this is a community that's ideally suited to this kind of local news. People know each other well enough to just connect. Again, when I write you know, some news, this is somebody I'm going to run into at the library. This is somebody right. I'm going to be waiting in line with at the grocery store. And that's so getting why my you facts should correct. always be nice. <laughs> yes, yes. Always be nice. We were yeah. discussing about Facebook earlier and how people hide behind their computers and their, and their phone screens and bully and say whatever they want to say, but it's really not, it's not what we should be doing. You know, we should really be mindful mm -hmm. of everyone's feelings whether you're in front of them or not you know and be nice yeah. because you never know yeah and you, you can you can know. use that same sense of being able to connect to be really positive to be really open to be a good listener to be a good reflector and just you know kind of i mean it's not just give the people what they want you got to give them what they need you know right. what people need is real factual information that they can trust so exactly Exactly. Any other questions? No, nope, that's it. Some more? Okay. Awesome. Well, you can find Judith on culvercitycrossroads.com. Yeah. Oh, and she has a Facebook page, Culver City Crossroads. Mm -hmm. she, I've also tagged her here, so you can ask her more questions if you want. But please check out her, um, her magazine. And if you have any stories that you want to contribute, she'll probably love to hear from you that way as well. Thank you for watching. Please try our drink. And like I said, you could probably substitute these two for just one Grand Manier, but it's, it's a pretty drink and it could be a fun one for the summer. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend and I will be off next week. So we'll see you in two weeks. Thank Bye. You. Bye.